Your brain is running a chemistry lab in your skull, and your relationship is the experiment. Every fight, every butterfly feeling, every moment of connection is literally chemicals flooding your brain and hijacking your rational thinking. I'm about to show you the actual neuroscience behind why you feel what you feel in relationships and how to manage it. By the end of this video, you'll understand your emotional brain better than most therapists do. Let's dive into the science. Meet your amygdala. This almond-shaped structure deep in your brain is your emotional alarm system. When your partner forgets your anniversary, doesn't text back or says something hurtful, your amygdala starts screaming like a smoke detector at a barbecue. Your amygdala processes emotional information in about 12 milliseconds. Your logical prefrontal cortex takes about 500 milliseconds to catch up. This means you're emotionally reacting to relationship situations 40 times faster than you can think about them logically. This is why you say things in arguments you immediately regret. Your amygdala threw the punch before your prefrontal cortex could stop it. Understanding this delay isn't an excuse for bad behavior. It's a roadmap for managing it better. Now let's talk about the chemical cocktail your brain creates when you fall in love. When you first meet someone amazing, your brain releases dopamine, norepinephrine, and serotonin in amounts that would make a pharmaceutical company jealous. Dopamine makes you feel euphoric. Norepinephrine makes your heart race and creates that can't eat, can't sleep feeling. And here's the plot twist. Serotonin actually drops during early stage love, which is why you obsessively think about your new partner the same way people with OCD obsessively think about their concerns. You're literally experiencing a form of temporary insanity. Your brain is basically saying, forget rational thinking. We're focused on this person now. But here's where the science gets really interesting for long-term relationships. After about 12 to 24 months, this chemical cocktail changes dramatically. Dopamine and norepinephrine decrease, which is why passionate love fades. But oxytocin and vasopressin increase, creating feelings of attachment and bonding. This is your brain transitioning from must-acquire mate mode to must-maintain partnership mode. The problem is most people interpret this chemical shift as falling out of love. They think something's wrong because they don't feel the same intensity. But neurologically, you're actually entering the phase where real partnership happens. Understanding the science saves relationships. That decrease in intensity isn't a problem to fix. It's your brain successfully bonding long-term. You're not losing love. You're gaining stability. Now let's talk about emotional regulation, which is basically teaching your amygdala to calm down and let your prefrontal cortex do its job. When you're emotionally triggered in your relationship, there's a literal neural pathway between your amygdala and your prefrontal cortex that needs to activate. Research shows this pathway works through something called cognitive reappraisal. Instead of reacting to the emotional alarm, you pause and reinterpret the situation. Your partner didn't text back because they're busy, not because they don't care. That critical comment was about the dishes, not about your worth as a person. This isn't toxic positivity. This is literally training your prefrontal cortex to regulate your amygdala's overreactions. The amygdala is the dramatic employee who thinks everything is an emergency. The prefrontal cortex is the calm manager saying, let's look at this rationally. Strengthening this pathway is like building a muscle. The more you practice cognitive reappraisal, the stronger the neural connection becomes. Eventually, your prefrontal cortex can calm your amygdala faster, meaning you react less impulsively in relationship conflicts. Here's a practical application of this science. The 90-second rule. Neuroscientist Jill Bolt-Taylor discovered that the physiological lifespan of an emotion in your body is just 90 seconds. That's how long it takes for the chemical reaction to flood your system, peak, and dissipate. Any emotional reaction lasting longer than 90 seconds means you're choosing to restart the cycle by continuing to think the thoughts that trigger the emotional response. Your partner said something that hurt you? Your amygdala reacts. Chemicals flood your system for 90 seconds. Then your choice is whether to keep thinking thoughts that re-trigger your amygdala or let your prefrontal cortex take over and respond rationally. This is why the timeout strategy works so well in relationship conflicts. You're giving your brain chemistry time to literally flush out of your system so you can think clearly. Now let's discuss stress hormones and relationships. When you're in chronic relationship conflict, your brain releases cortisol, the primary stress hormone. Prolonged cortisol exposure actually shrinks your hippocampus, the brain region responsible for memory and emotional regulation. This creates a vicious cycle. Relationship stress releases cortisol. Cortisol damages the brain regions that help you manage stress. You become worse at managing relationship stress. This is why toxic relationships literally change your brain structure. But here's the hopeful part. The brain has neuroplasticity, meaning it can heal and rewire itself. 
when you reduce chronic stress, your hippocampus can actually recover and grow new neurons. Your brain isn't permanently damaged by past relationship trauma. Let's talk about attachment neuroscience. Your childhood relationship with caregivers literally wired neural pathways that affect how you respond to relationship threats as an adult. If your childhood was secure, your brain developed strong connections between your amygdala and prefrontal cortex, making emotional regulation easier. If your childhood was anxious or avoidant, those connections developed differently. Your amygdala might be hyperactive, seeing threats everywhere, or your prefrontal cortex might be overactive, shutting down emotions completely. This isn't deterministic. You're not stuck with your attachment wiring, but understanding it helps explain why certain relationship situations trigger disproportionate reactions. Your current partner forgot to call, but your brain is responding like it's being abandoned because similar neural pathways are activating. Here's where neuroscience meets practical relationship skills. Mirror neurons fire both when we perform actions and when we observe others performing them. This is why emotions are contagious in relationships. When your partner is anxious, your mirror neurons activate, making you feel anxious too. When they're calm, you feel calmer. This means emotional regulation isn't just individual work, it's collaborative work. When you regulate your own emotions effectively, you're helping regulate your partner's emotions through mirror neuron activation. The most powerful relationship tool based on neuroscience is this. Create positive emotional experiences that activate your brain's reward system together. Novel experiences, physical touch, laughter, and collaborative problem solving all release dopamine and oxytocin, strengthening your bond at the neurological level. Your relationship isn't just emotional or spiritual. It's a biological partnership where two brains are constantly affecting each other's chemistry. When you understand this, you stop taking emotional reactions so personally. You realize your partner's amygdala is reacting to perceived threats, not objective reality. This science doesn't excuse hurtful behavior, but it does explain it and provide specific strategies for managing it better. You can't control your initial emotional reactions because they're happening at the chemical level, but you absolutely can control what you do with those reactions once your prefrontal cortex comes online. Here's your action plan based on neuroscience. When you feel emotionally triggered, pause for 90 seconds before responding. Let the chemical flood pass. Then engage your prefrontal cortex by asking, what is my amygdala reacting to? Is the threat real or perceived? Practice cognitive reappraisal daily. When something bothers you, consciously reinterpret it before reacting. My partner is quiet, which my amygdala interprets as rejection, but logically, they're probably just tired. Finally, reduce chronic relationship stress because cortisol is literally damaging your brain's ability to manage emotions. If your relationship creates constant stress, either develop better conflict skills together or seriously consider whether the relationship is sustainable. Subscribe for more content where we translate complicated neuroscience into practical relationship strategies. And tell me in the comments which brain chemical you think controls your relationship most. Remember, you're not just having feelings. You're experiencing complex neurochemical processes involving multiple brain regions, dozens of neurotransmitters, and evolutionary programming millions of years old. Understanding the science doesn't make love less beautiful. It makes managing it more possible.